so I am sitting on the floor in my new house. Our sofa doesn't come until the end of August, so I think I'll just be filming right here in front of my fireplace until then. I think it's cute. It's a really cute setup. So you guys have been wanting me to post a video on all the ways that I can make money from home or that I do make money from home and as well as you can make money from home. I am an independent contractor, so that means I lend out my services to companies who need at-home workers, remote workers, or someone to drive around to do things for them. No, it's not a personal assistant. I am involved with getting a 1099 form, so I am in charge of all my taxes, making sure I save up for my taxes from all the money I get, and I make a really good living doing this to the fact that I can sit at home all day if I want, but my money is also directly tied to how hard I work. Let's just jump right into it. I am a contractor as an ESL teacher. So that is an English second language teacher. So I lend out my services to people in China, Japan, Korea, mainly Asian countries who need and really see a benefit of their children learning English. I teach ages from Babies, I have had a three, not a three month year old. I've had a one year old baby in my class before and I've had people up in their 80s in my classes before. I've taught doctors, lawyers, judges, TV personalities, basketball players who are famous in like China or Japan. And I really have been able to make a really good living doing this. Each ESL company pays differently you are paid more if you are an American with an American passport. Um, but if you are like a Mexican person who can speak English, but you live in Mexico, you may not be getting as much money as me. People in Asia for the teaching demographic really value um, first language speakers. So um, American is usually the top one because they like our accents. And I'm not being prejudiced or anything. This is literally what they prefer and what they put on their um, documents when you apply. They like Americans, UK, Britain. Um, they can do South African and um, Australian, Canadian. But usually Americans get paid the most from what I have noticed. Now there might be other places that pay more, but if you're lucky, you can find those. You can definitely look up those online. Here are some right here that I have been with. You can use my code to get a quicker interview with them. And you put that code in with your application and you should be getting a call back. I make up to, I could make a little over $3,000, but my time is split up between everything else that I do. I like to have my money in different baskets. So that way if one fails, I also have another five to back me up. So I can make, usually I make almost up to 3,000. I think the most I've made is 26, 2,700 doing that and I work from home. I get up at 3 a.m. in the morning, or I used to, now that I have other endeavors, I don't get up that early anymore. But if I really, really wanna make a lot of money, I'll start at 3 a.m. and I'll end my job at 12 p.m. and then the rest of the day is, is mine. So if you're interested in becoming an online ESL teacher, you need a bachelor's degree, you need your TEFL or your CEFL, and I'll put those right here for you. You're gonna have to take a test Make sure you're good at good with teaching kids. Make sure you're articulate enough to teach adults and you need to have patience and you're gonna have to take a test to get these certifications, but this is all done at home. So there's really no downside. Another one is being a substitute teacher. I was actually gonna go into training to be a substitute teacher, but I got hired as an ESL teacher and who wouldn't wanna teach at home? The last thing I ever wanted to do was go back into a school. I hated school so much. And I did not wanna to have to step foot back into another school. Just the smell of it. Just the smell of school brings back bad memories for me. It was just never a place for me, at least public school. College was okay, <laughs> but a substitute teacher, you can make up to 50 to $80 a day being a substitute teacher. Maybe that's not good enough because, I don't know, you're there for eight hours, so maybe $80, 50 to $80 isn't worth your time, but it's a really good filler. 
So if you ever need something to lean back on, I really do suggest becoming a substitute teacher. Maybe one day I'll do that. I don't know if I feel like talking to kids again <laughs> or going back. But I was actually in the process of becoming a substitute teacher when I got hired as an ESL teacher. Um, it's pretty good money, something to lean on if you are in hard times. And I will try to leave some information here. You do have to go take a one-time test at a testing center to get your certification. My next favorite one that I do is being a notary. I am a mobile notary agent. When someone needs to have a loan modification on their house, they're selling their house or they need to refinance their house they need to have a notary come and notarize those pieces of paper a refinance is about 136 113 to 136 pages long you need to have a laser printer to do this you're going to be using legal size paper and letter size paper and i'll show you what those differences are so you have to buy a lot of things for your business with this but it's all tax deductible so you know don't get too hung up on it yes you need a car as well and it does put wear and tear on your car but i really think that it is beneficial to do this even though you're sacrificing something my aunt has been doing this for years and she gets about 10 of them a day sometimes she has to say no to some of these offers because she just doesn't have the time notaries will get paid between 80 dollars to 150 dollars for just an hour of work. So right now, my salary paid for this is about $100 an hour. There are some that I will take that are smaller for the hour because there's only like 30 pages. My mom just got one page, yes, one page for someone to sign and she got paid $75 and it didn't even take an hour. It was right down the street from her. I think being a notary is one of my favorite. It is a very high stress job because you are looking at people's social security numbers. You are looking at people's money, income, what they pay on their house. So you have to be a very trustworthy person. You can be charged, I think, like $5,000 if you share any of the information. I mean, imagine you do three of these a day, you're making $300 for three hours of work. Next one is being an e-doc notary. Now these are for the people who wanna work at home. You can become an online notarizer. So it's the same thing as me. You have to be a traditional notary to get this job, to be able to do this job. Um, you have to go in and, and swear in. However, you don't have to drive around to people's houses and waste your gas and your mileage and put some wear and tear on your car because instead of doing that, you have a webcam on your computer and you take people to do the online docs. So you will send them the docs, let them have control of your computer or something like that, and they can sign their names on those documents and then you just email it in to the people who need it. That's it. Now the reason why I haven't done this is because it is expensive and it's a little confusing for me. I am not a very big high tech person when it comes to computers. So you need a certain software that either costs 200 to $400 for a one-time buy, or you have to, you have to make months, a monthly payment on them for the rest of the time that you use the software. I think that's what it is. It's pretty expensive, you guys, but it's worth it. So just like my $400 write-off for my printer, is worth that for me, so is the e -doc. It's the same amount of pay for less work. <laughs> okay, so the next one I have signed up for is a food and health safety test giver, something like that. <laughs> so I'll actually put it right here for you. This is a person who is going to give the test and watch people take the test for restaurant owners. So if you wanna create a restaurant, you have to get your food and health license. And the people, you don't have to teach them the subject. You can just be the tester. So you would literally just hand them the test and watch them take the test. And you get paid, the most you can get paid is $200 for 25 minutes of your work. The test is not that long. I've seen the test. It looks pretty easy if you've studied for it. My aunt does this and she got me into it and she makes $200 per person. So I asked her how many people 
have you had in one class? And she said she's had up to 20 people in a class before. So 20 times 200, come on, she's making bank. So I sign up to do that. However, you have to market yourself with this one. Now, being a notary, you don't really have to market yourself. You sign up on, on websites and put your name up there and people call you. And it, you know, it's really quick because notaries, they, they need you. But when you're becoming a food and health safety, it's all about who you know. So you need to go into restaurants, call the food health people in your state and let them know that you are a food and health safety test giver or testing location. One that I used to do that I no longer do that I'm thinking about doing again and that is being an eBay seller. The reason why I don't recommend Amazon is because you have to apply to be a seller on Amazon. You have to do a lot of things in order to be on Amazon and all this FBA or these things that people say teaching you on Amazon, it just sounds really complicated in my mind. However, eBay, you don't have to go through the ringer to become a seller on eBay. You just make an account and you put your stuff up there. From what I know, when I was in high school, I was an eBay, eBay seller and I was making like $300 a month. I think it was a month. And I was selling jewelry. So I would go to stores and if they were having a sale on their jewelry, I would, I would buy it. Sometimes I would get jewelry for like a dollar because it was so inexpensive and they were just trying to get rid of it. And then I would set up a mannequin, put the jewelry on her and take a picture. And then I would use so many different keywords in order to have my listing up there. And I was selling things that were popular at the time. So what was popular when I was in high school was the big bib necklaces that were jewels. I mean, these things were huge and they were so popular that I could sell them for $10 to $15 a pop. How? How can you make a lot of money if you don't wanna do what I did on eBay? There's this person that I watch on YouTube. His name is um, Resell Rabbit. <laughs> Some of you guys might know it if you're interested in the financial sector of YouTube, which I'm sure you are, which is why you're here. I'll uh, link his channel right here and also in the description box. And he's making bank. It's something that I've looked into. I'm always interested in making more money. Where can I make money at home? What can I you know, do to flip? You have to think outside the box. You have to risk. You have to do what other people aren't doing. Yes. Now the last one I'm gonna talk about is having a product. So I have made catalogs for vending machines. It was something I needed, and then I was like, hey, this would be a really good thing to sell to people who also need it, who are beginners. I was a beginner and I needed it, but there was, I didn't know anybody was selling it, so I made one. So you can see up here, I showed you guys before, it has all the snacks up here. It's a vending machine catalog that I sell for beginners. It even has, your gumball machines in here. So it's a catalog that you bring to locations when you want to show them what you sell. And I sell this. This is another way that I can make money for anybody who would like one. I mean, if you support me and you need one, then yeah, please DM me on my Instagram or send me an email and I would love to do this for you. I think this is a great product. I believe in this product. I don't wanna put anything out there that is scamming someone. I want you guys to know that I'm here for you. So being able to provide something that helps beyond just uh, advice here and there, I think it's a good idea. If you know how to make something and it's gonna help people, do it. You never know what's going to happen for you. What's for you is for you. So don't ever talk yourself out of being able to create a product. Being an entrepreneur is definitely stressful. You start out broke, <laughs> but if you are dedicated and you have ambition, you will find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So I wanna do another video on all the ways you can make money with vending machines. So I wanna to touch more on that in another video. Let me know down below if you wanna know other ways you can make money as in the vending machine community. I wanna do that next. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if I put you onto something you didn't know about. Put down below if you make money from home and what you do, that would be really awesome and beneficial to other people. Please subscribe, give this video a like, and I hope to see you guys later. I really hope this helped, I really do. I'll see you guys later, bye.